I thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of New Church and to bring the word this morning. It is truly an honor. Buenos dias a mis hermanos y hermanas en Cristo. Gracias por la oportunidad a representar las iglesias nuevas. Estoy muy agradecida para ser contigo y también bendecir nuestro Dios conjuntos. Will you pray with me? O oh, Holy Spirit and Creator of us all, enter this place with passion. Ignite us. Stand with me now and speak your truth. I am your vessel and you are my God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Amen. My dad is clumsy. For his birthday a couple of weeks ago, we got him a shirt that said, I do all of my own stunts. He's wearing it today. If you see him, you'll know that's him. He really does. He does all of his own stunts. And one of his greatest stunts ever happened just a few weeks ago. He was angry. He and my stepmom had been arguing. I don't know what about, but something had made him really upset, and he was late for a meeting at the church. So on his way out the door, he grabbed a banana, stomped down the stairs, out the front door, and out onto the street. And as he walked, he peeled his banana. And he was muttering to himself about the argument. With each bite, he assured himself of how wrong she was and how sure he was that he was right. By the time he'd finished his snack, he was absolutely convinced that he had won the argument. In his assuredness, he tossed down the banana pill arrogantly it was not only a gesture of frustration, but also a testament to his triumph. He could do it if he wanted to. It was his life. It was his banana peel. It was also his foot that stepped on his banana peel and slipped right in the middle of the street and fell in front of an oncoming bus. And now, as he struggled to pull himself up and crawl to the curb, he said to himself, is this it? Is this how it all will end? What a stupid way to go. I slip on my own banana peel and get hit by a bus. And next you're probably expecting me to say something like, a piano fell from the sky, and then he walked away like an accordion in the cartoons. But it's true, my dad, does all of his own stunts. And we do too, really. We try and pull lots of stunts with God when it comes to being church. We want to play it safe or play at being church and keep the really good stuff for ourselves. But that just isn't good enough. We are called to build up the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is not here to reignite our already existing faith, but to create it, to love us, to move us to love, and then to action. Ours is a story of a God who time and time again has brought change and upheaval to neatly structured lives. When we ask the Holy Spirit to take control, we give up everything. But that's okay. That's not really what people are looking for. They are looking for something worth risking their lives, worth dying for. Not just a big hug or a hip social scene, if we want to feel good, then we ought to go and get a nice massage or see a Disney movie. But if we want to be God's faithful people, then we choose action. Passionate, 
unpredictable, inspirational action. That is what New Church is all about. Responding in faith to the call of God in service to all people. Luke's Pentecost story sets our agenda as Christians, and the Holy Spirit is what brings that reality to being. We have cast out a vision that by the year 2020, we will start a thousand churches. But if we get scared or threatened or we make excuses or we sit idly by and expect God to do the rest, then we are setting ourselves up for a huge fall. We will slip on our own banana peel if the vision that is cast before us becomes our own rather than that which is led by the Holy Spirit. We are to proclaim what God has done in Jesus Christ, and we have serious work to do. There are people, lots of them, hurting, desperate, wounded, lonely, and rejected, who need to be embraced by the love of God. God's Spirit empowers us and charges us to spread this love, not for the sake of growing our denomination or building bigger steeples, but for the sake of love, for the sake of love itself. When we answer this call, we become like wildfire. And I know something about wildfire because I witnessed one last week back home in Colorado. And it started very, very small from one flash of lightning, and it grew quickly. The smoke billowed up three times as high as the highest mountain. The sun and the sky were turned to darkness and the moon to blood red. It was limitless, unpredictable. It did not discriminate or hesitate. It just grew and spread as fast as it could, consuming everything in its path. That spirit, real spirit. It's not the same thing as school spirit or team spirit or fighting spirit, but real spirit. And it is contagious, says Friedrich Buechner. The disciples were gathered all in one place and they caught the spirit of God. God breathed into Jesus through the Holy Spirit and they were forever changed. It took hold of them and it inspired them. It breathed new life into them. And the effect was something that people really could not understand. Oh, they must be drunk. Why else would they be acting so happy, so delirious, so weird? But that's what living in the Spirit of God does to us. We stand out. People take notice. When you're drunk on the Holy Spirit, you are totally abandoning self and social mores, totally rejecting inhibitions just for the sake of being free in the Spirit, totally free to share the Spirit of Christ with people we hardly know or don't know at all. So what are we waiting for? Let's start a little church in our hearts. Start a little church in your heart. Start a little church in your heart. This has been with me like day after day since I started preaching or working on this sermon. The song will not leave my head. Why is it that most of us have no problem cutting loose at a party or making fools of ourselves during the Super Bowl or when somebody on The Price is Right wins a new car. These things are safe. They're easy to get excited about, but they are also empty and misdirected hopes. Maybe that's why the people in the scripture are so confused. They say, how come we're hearing them talk in various mother tongues? They're speaking our language, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning and they couldn't make heads 
or tales of it. We, as followers of Christ, are called to reach out to those who are different from us. Those we don't understand, those who confuse us and make us feel uncomfortable, and we speak to them in their mother tongue. In other words, a language that they understand. And we do it in such a way that they are inspired, not distance, not condemned, but inspired. Could it be that we who are gathered today as church, we who are not brought together by our sameness in politics or ideologies or race or color or creed or because of who we love or our opinions, that we are gathered by the Holy Spirit and united through Jesus Christ? Could it be that we are to proclaim truth, to prophesy, as it says in Acts, and dream dreams of a church that really does seek to welcome all of God's children with open arms and serve the world inspired by God's mercy and love? That's crazy. When Peter and the disciples were inspired by God's Spirit on Pentecost, everybody thought they were drunk, even though it was only 9 o'clock in the morning. They were, says Beekner, And the wine that they drank was at the table of a God who calls us to drink from that very same cup and then to turn and offer it to anyone and everyone who is willing to take it from us, and we don't, hear me, brothers and sisters, we don't leave the table. <laughs> New church is not just a nice little ministry of the church. It is the future of our church. It is our call. If we believe that Jesus is who he claimed to be, then we Christians, we little Christ, we disciples of Christ, had better do something about it. We are called not just to believe, but to follow. So let's get wild. Let's get passionate. Let's get fired up. It will start small, within our very selves. God will build within us a dwelling place for the most holy, a place that hope and grace can grow. The kingdom of God is here among us. God has blessed us richly, and we have been entrusted with the most precious gift in the world, the love of Jesus. This priceless, priceless commodity only gains value when we spread it without regard for who is worthy to receive it or for fear of it getting out of control. Let's get out of control. Let's get passionate. We have something worth sharing. We are called to spread God's love, God's justice, and God's blessing, precious as they are, as if they were limitless and without end for one very simple reason. They are. So the vision has been cast. Will we be so blinded by our own fears and self-righteousness that it will cause us to slip and fall? Will we be overrun by the realities of self-serving life? Or will we step out in faith, together, not alone, but together, we have one another, onto an uncharted path? Start small with a little tiny church in your heart. 
ask God for inspiration and presence and wisdom. And then go and start a fire. Amen.